Hi and welcome to our lesson on domain and range. Now we've already looked at what is the domain and what is the range, but it won't hurt to quickly recap. The, remember, the domain is what I may put in, while the range is what I can get out. So what may I do? And what can I get out? Okay, now let me give you another type of example. Imagine we have a mincer. And I'm sorry to say, but that's my best attempt at drawing a mincer. A mincer is that thing that you put meat, pieces of meat inside of it, and it minces it so that you get mince on, um, coming out. So there's an input and an output. Now, that mincer is made out of aluminium, and you may put anything in that is softer than aluminium. So for example, you can put in bread and you will get crumbs coming out. Or you can put in meat, of course, it's a meat mincer, and obviously we'll have mince coming out. Now if it is true that we can put in a soft enough wood, we will get sawdust coming out. So as you can see, we have certain things that we may put in, but certain things we may not put in. For example, what happens if we put in steel that is harder than aluminium? Well, if we do do that, we will simply break the machine. We may not do it, it's not allowed, okay? because it will break the machine. So the function determines what we may and we may not do. And of course, um, what we get out is also limited. For example, with a mincer, it is impossible that I can get a computer coming out on the other side. Okay, I mean that's not the output. Okay, um, yes. Well, let's leave it at that. Okay, so the the output is also determined by the function because a function can't do anything. Um, it can only do what the function determines. Okay, so let me go and look at mathematical. Um, a mathematical function, what restricts the domain of mathematical functions? The first one is fractions. Fractions can be, you can recognize a fraction, it's something that has a numerator and a denominator and the condition is what may my input not be? My, my input may never make my denominator equal to zero and to indicate it we use this equal sign the denominator equals zero, no no it may not and therefore we have this line through it that means not equal to zero. So let's look at an example so I might have something like um, I have 1 over x b. My denominator is what? x may not equal zero. So here I already have it quite quite uh, uh, very or well, I could easily get it um, my denominator may just not be equal to zero. Let's look at another example. If I have 2 over x plus or my x minus 7, okay, remember my denominator, I'm all the while trying to limit my uh, input, I'm trying to get my domain. My denominator is what? Well, everything at the bottom is x minus 7. x minus 7 may not equal zero. And now it's a normal equation, it's just, it doesn't have an equation sign, it's got a not equation sign, a not equal sign. So if I add a 7 on both sides to solve it, I see that x may not be 7, 0 plus 7, x may not be 7. And it makes sense, because if I look at that, if, I, if x is 7, I have 7 minus 7, which is 0. I may not have my denominator equal to 0. One more example for fractions. Okay, we have negative 3 over x plus 2 minus 1. That is my function. In other words, that's some fx. Let's put that here. Okay, fx. Okay, is that. Okay, now to work out my domain, I know, well, x plus 2, that's my denominator, nothing else, may not equal 0. I may not divide with 0. And when I have that, I can now solve for x. I just want to limit x, my input. So I subtract 2 on both sides. I get x is not equal to 
negative 2. x may not be equal to negative 2, and you can see why. Negative 2 plus 2 will give me 0. Therefore, x may not be equal to negative 2. How do I write it? Okay, if they now ask me to write my domain, how can I, can I write it? Well, there's actually three ways in which we can write it. The first way is we can say, well, um, we know that x may be any real number. x is allowed to be any other number, but x may not equal the number negative 2. That's one way of writing it. x can be any real number. This e just means it's an element of it's an element of all of the numbers, it's one of the numbers in all of the numbers but x may not be equal to 2. Another way of writing it is in set notation. So x is an element and now we're going to describe a group of numbers and to describe a group of numbers we use curly brackets. The initial group, the, or let's say the initial thing is we we describe the whole of a group like for example, I would describe people in South Africa as um, South Africans, the, the biggest majority. So we would say x is an element of real numbers. That's the most important thing. x can be any real number. Maybe x was limited. It may only have been integers. You won't necessarily find a, a problem like that. But uh, um, x is, first of all, any real number. Then we use a, a line going straight down. That just means conditions are going to follow. So whatever we write on the other side of this is the conditions that are going to follow. And the condition is that x may not equal negative 2. And there's no other condition. If there was another condition, we would have put a, a semicolon and then write the other condition. In this case, there is no such other um, condition. So we can just close this and say, well, that's, that's all of it. Okay, so let me give another example. Let's say your your parents, you're a girl, and your parents give you conditions on your boyfriend. Um, your boyfriend. Okay. First of all, they give you the condition that he must be in school. Okay, that's the biggest condition. Okay, let's call it B. Must be an element of school. He must be in school. Yeah, that's the big condition. Then they give a few other conditions. Okay, they say, well, um, B may not have tattoos. Okay, they don't allow you to date someone with tattoos. Okay, they go on and they give you another condition. They want him to do well at maths. So B um, must be greater or equal to 80% in maths. I'm not going to write it all, but there's two conditions. They say that these are the two conditions that your boyfriend must, or maybe girlfriend, um, must adhere to. So first of all, the big condition is he must be someone in school. Then even if he is in school, these are going to be extra conditions. Both of those conditions must also be true. That's That's one way of maybe writing it in a real life situation even though I doubt your parents have something like that on your wall but uh, well maybe you understand a little bit better now the next way in which we can express it another way of writing it uh, or in reading it is using bracket notation so uh, what I mean by that is x is an element of all of the numbers from negative infinity okay up to the number negative 2. So if I look at a number line for x, there's the number negative 2. x can be all of these numbers. From here on, x can be all of those numbers up to infinity, but it may not be equal to 2. Now, I can never be equal to infinity, that's why I use a round bracket. If I could be equal to 2, I would have used a square bracket, but I can't. Okay, um, I may not be equal to negative 2. Okay. And x may also be any number that's bigger than that. Okay, so x may also be any number bigger than negative 2, it just may not be 
negative 2. So, in other words, I want to unite this line with that line. I want to unite it, but I can't write it in one bracket, so I write unite, okay, and then from negative 2 up to infinity. Okay, that is one way or one other way. This unite can also mean or. Okay, x is, this kind of means less than negative 2, or x is greater than negative 2. Okay, the next condition that restricts my domain, we've now looked at fractions. We've uh, restricted our fractions, let's just get there. We've, we've seen that fractions restrict my, my uh, domain. The next one that restricts it is roots. Now the condition when I use roots, or they are also called radicals, and that's obviously square root, or cube root, or things like that, they are called radicals. The condition there is that the input, the value that's inside there, of an even radical, in other words, that um, little exponent there, if you might, the radical index, that radical, if it's even, in other words, 2, 4, 6, 8, the input of an even radical may not be less than 0. In other words, what's in here may not be less than 0. In other words, it may be 0, it may equal 0, and it may be greater than zero, but the input must be greater or equal to zero. So, for example, if I look at, let's say, the square root, I have fx is equal to the square root of x. Then, for my domain, x, the input is just x, must be bigger or equal to zero. Uh, very easy one. Okay, let's look at another example. How about if I have fx and as an input I actually have x minus 7. x minus 7 in this case, I see that x minus 7 must be bigger or equal to 0. The input must be bigger or equal to 0. That gives me that x, I add a 7 on both sides to solve x, x must be larger or equal to 7 and that makes sense. If I have x and I subtract something from it, whatever I subtract, the answer must still be bigger than 0. Okay, uh, And that will be true if that's a 2 or a 4 or a 6, it doesn't matter as long as it's even. So let's look at one more, let's say I have fx Okay, or actually, let me just the previous one, let me just write it in a different one. This one I could have said, but x is an element of real numbers, but x must be bigger than 0. Let's write this specific one in uh, set notation. x is an element of real numbers. Given that, in other words, now follows the condition that x is larger or equal to 7 can be any real number given that it is larger or equal to 7. Okay, next one. Let's look at a function like this. Let's say we have the radical, ach, and let's shake it up with a 4 there, x minus or plus 2, and outside we have a plus 9, for example. Now in this case, remember, just the input is important. Only x plus 2, the input of the rabbit radical, what's underneath, must be greater or equal to 0. Okay, the 9 does not influence it at all. Again, we must get x on its own, so we subtract it 2 on both sides, so we find that x is greater or equal to negative 2. Okay, that means x is any real number. The way we can write it when we have real numbers, we may write it also in bracket notation. So we say that x is an element and what I'm actually trying to do is making the number line we have a negative 2 from 0 x must be greater or equal to so it includes 2 and greater than so x is an element greater than 2 means my bottom limit is 2 
it may equal that's why I use the block bracket okay negative 2 and now what is my upper limit well it goes on to infinity it doesn't have an upper limit so it goes up to infinity and I close with a round bracket round bracket saying that I can never equal infinity actually okay that is the second condition first condition was fractions second condition is uh, radicals the third condition is logarithms now the condition for logarithms is that the input may not be zero or less than zero so for example if I have the logarithm of uh, base 2 of X okay so the input being the the answer part not the base this is the input okay that input may not be zero or less okay and uh, you can reason it out for yourself why not I would actually encourage you why can it not be uh, zero or less remember the question here is what exponent must I give 2 to get the answer X what exponent can we give 2 so that the answer is 0 there's no exponent I can give to 2 so that the result is 0 same with negative numbers 2 to the power of something must uh, gives me X and I'm saying that X is negative or 0 is it possible is there any exponent that I can give for 2 to give me a zero answer or a negative answer no it's impossible it's ridiculous there's no such thing in other words I may not have an input that is less than zero or even equal to zero okay so in this specific example we see that X the input must be bigger than zero okay uh, let's write that in um, bracket notation so here we have 0 okay. we have everything larger than 0 this would be a graphical representation of the domain X must be greater than 0 and I would write it as X is an element of and I close my uh, or my bottom limit is 0 I cannot be equal to 0 it's an open dot so I have an open bracket in its maximum is infinity it can be any number larger than zero and I can't be equal to infinity so it's also an open bracket or actually a round bracket okay how about the question if I have logarithm uh, of let's say x minus 7 in here okay if that is my function sorry that's fx I've been writing that that's fx is equal to the logarithm of x minus 7 then I know the input x minus 7 must be bigger than 0 I solve for x so I s add a 7 on both sides and I find that x is larger than 7 if I write that in let's say uh, normal just as an expression I would just say x is an element of r but x is larger than 7 Okay, finally, let's look at one more example. Let's look at the logarithm. Let's say base 3. The input is x plus 2. And we have a plus 9, not as an input, but outside. Okay, in this case, once again, it's just the input that we're concerned about. The plus 9 is outside of the logarithm uh, because it's outside of the bracket. So we know that the input is x plus 7. That must be bigger than 0 which means that to solve it, sorry, not plus 7, plus 2, I subtract a 2 on both sides, and therefore I get that x is larger than negative 2. So if I write that in set notation, I say, well, x is an element of the set. First of all, the biggest condition is that x must be a real number, any real number we can use, but the, more s the stricter conditions now follow, x must be larger than negative 2 that is another way of writing this uh, domain 
Okay, that are, that's all of the conditions that we can use to restrict the domains that you will at least encounter in school. And I hope you understand and good luck going and, uh, to do it on your own. I uh, don't think it's that difficult, but maybe watch the video again if you're not 100% confident. Next up, range.